Hey guys, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Austin and this is Alex. Hey guys. And today we're going to be talking about the FAA Part 107 certification. Yeah. If you're watching this video, you probably know what it is, but just in case, what is it? Basically, to fly commercially drones or anything that flies with a camera, you need to get your FAA Part 107 certification and that allows you to fly legally and make money, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so essentially if you're benefiting financially in any way from flying drones, you're going to need this in the United States. And that um, even means you guys out there who are making your YouTube videos and clicking the monetization button and you're making money from YouTube. There's actually a ton of opportunity right now overall in this industry. And there's people that are real estate agents that are just trying to bring up their photography game a little bit. Um, you have people that are doing surveying and mapping. And there's so many great tools out there and the software to complement these drones are enabling people to do so much. Yeah. And actually a while ago, um, quite some time ago, we got our 107 certifications and just talking to the people at the testing centers is crazy. They said they've never seen anything like it. Yes. There's thousands and thousands of people taking their 107 because I think people are seeing the potential. So we're, we're going to walk you guys through a couple of tips. Um, it is a little bit daunting, but once you have the steps down, it's pretty straightforward. So we're just going to kind of help demystify that and make it easy for you guys. For those of you guys who are new to aviation in general, the FAA stands for Federal Aviation Administration. And this is the same administration that governs all of airspace all over the world. So anything from airliners to airplanes, even ultralights, the paramotors that we got to fly. And now we have all these drones in the air, so they, you better believe, have to step in and regulate these so we can share the skies safely. So the FAA Part 107 test, it works the same way that uh, if you were to get your private pilot's license, you have to take a written exam. So you have to go to the same kind of office and do the same kind of test on a computer. Uh, this test was actually 60 questions. There's a lot of overlap between general aviation and what you need to know to operate a drone commercially. Yeah, regarding the test, you actually, uh, a lot of the questions that that's going to test are very similar to questions that you'd be asked on the private pilot exam. Some of them are modified to include drones or drone relevant material. Some of them aren't. Some of them are questions that you would have to answer on the private pilot exam. And so you definitely, I think this is a test that you would fail if you didn't study for it, if you you know didn't have a base knowledge of yes. what you're getting into. But with just some basic preparation, you could actually do really well on the test without yes. too much effort. And we're not going to get into the details of the subject matter of the test, but what we are going to do is we're going to share with with you the steps that we took to successfully pass. I think we have about a dozen employees here at Flight Test who all have their 107. Everybody passed first try, and it was a pretty low maintenance process to get through. I personally, I, I have a little bit of aviation background. I know a little bit about airspace. I was able to study for about two hours and go take the test, and I got at 80%. So let's talk, talk about studying a little bit. Yes. What are some of the resources that you used to study? So one of the big resources that we all used here at the shop was called remotepilot101.com, and this is an online video course course, uh, similar to kind of like our build videos. The only difference is they're teaching you exactly the subject matter to pass the FAA 107 exam. So something that I found helpful was uh, 3D Robotics actually has um, on their website, they have a practice test or actually quite a few practice tests. I think a total of like 120 possible questions. And some of them are the actual questions you'll be asked on the test, mm -hmm. not all of them. And I found it really helpful to just roll through those. I think you'd go through five at a time. There'll be a link below to get to that along with any of these resources we're mentioning but and you can just kind of grade yourself every five just kind of get a sense of where you're at and then I used that video course to go back and study up on the stuff I was bad at yes so I was for some reason found weather to be a difficult subject and just kept mixing up the different terms and so I was consistently getting those wrong so I went back and I studied up on that section and the cool thing about remotepilot101.com and other paid services because remote pilot 101 you do have to pay for it yeah so it's about 150 bucks for one license and you get access to the whole entire course practice tests, etc. As Austin was saying, you take that practice test first, you see what sections you're having trouble with, and then you can go directly to that s section uh, in the video tutorials and you learn specifically about those subjects. There are other resources out there. I watched Tony and Chelsea Northrop. They had a really helpful like two hour-ish long video. Yes. That was actually, it was kind of geared more about just how to pass the test. Mm -hmm. I feel like the Remote Pilot 101 resource, I feel like it more so was actually trying to impart the information to you, yes. the things that you wanted to know. The cool thing about Remote Pilot 101 specifically and, and other paid services like that is typically they keep updating their content based on the feedback they get from people who take the test. So I didn't personally, but say if I were to go take the test and I said, hey, there's these questions on here that I didn't feel I really learned in these video tutorials, it might be a new question that the FAA has 
has added because the FAA is always modifying their, their exams and stuff like that. And they'll come out with update videos towards the end of their course, which address all of those new subject matters, which is pretty cool. And also you don't have to pay for something like that. There's tons of free study guides online. And actually we would ask you guys if you have a cool resource in the comments that we haven't checked out. Maybe it's a different course that we didn't try or maybe mm -hmm. a free one, but feel free to leave it below. The reason we settled on Remote Pilot 101, I think it was just because it was cheap. Yeah. And also it was a lifetime license. So you actually have to retake this test every two years to mm -hmm. recertify yourself. Um, and so you can just look up your login information and get back in there and, and study, brush up again, and go take the test again. Yeah. So we'll worry about that in two years. But <laughs> Yeah, and there is a little bit of an investment. I think Remote Pilot 101 was about 150 bucks, and it is about 150 bucks to take the test. Right. So 300 bucks all in. The nice thing about it is, when once you do have your 107 certification, when you have like Aunt Sally or Uncle John, who's like, hey, Alex has drones, can you take a picture of my house? You can be like, sure, 300 bucks which is pretty cool. Actually, don't do that to your aunt and uncle, but you get what I'm saying. Anytime that the opportunity arises where there's potential that you could be flying your drone commercially, you now have that option, regardless of whether or not you're a photographer or you have a video production company. If you're just a hobbyist, it could open up a little bit of a revenue stream to help support your hobby, which is pretty cool. So let's talk a little bit about taking the test. So in order to take the test, once you studied up, you're gonna call CATS, which is the testing company that helps facilitate FAA exams. Find out what your closest testing center is. Our test happen to be a, uh, a private airport mm -hmm. um, near us. Once you schedule your test, you're gonna show up at that designated time. They recommend getting there about 20 minutes early. They're gonna give you a pencil, they're gonna give you spare paper, they're gonna give you like a legend or like a little booklet, they're gonna give you a calculator. And then you're gonna be sent into like a small uh, private room with a computer and you'll sit down to take your test. Like we mentioned earlier, it's 63 questions, only 60 of those count. When you're taking the exam, according to the FAA, 15 to 25% of the questions are gonna cover regulations. Uh, 15 to 25% are gonna cover airspace requirements. 11 to 16% are gonna cover weather and seven to 11% are gonna cover loading and performance. And then 35 to 45% cover the operations of the UAV. So the nice thing is, is that once you're finished taking the test, um, you don't have to be in suspense. You'll know immediately whether or not you passed or you failed. So if you fail, which I would find unlikely, um, but if you fail, you're able to take the test again and schedule it again after a certain period of time. And if you pass, there is a few minutia you have to cover after that. Yes. And actually, if you ask, they will show you the questions that you got wrong. They won't tell you the answers to those questions, but you can see the subject matter that you were weak in. They will give you a printout with a test report that'll have an ID number on it. Um, then when you get home, you're going to need to log into something that's called IACRA. And the website is iacra.faa.gov. And then when you log in there, you're gonna, um, you're gonna need to register, log in, and then you actually associate that test ID to your account. And then once you can confirm that and verify that, it'll pop up your score, it'll show you passed. And then there's a, a little bit of a uh, process you have to go through in order to get your temporary certificate. So from there, you'll be able to print your temporary certificate. And if you're having trouble, make sure you uh, unblock your pop-ups. Cause I was like trying to figure it out forever. <laughs> and he came over, he's like, dude, just uncheck your pop-ups. Little pro tip there. Yeah, <laughs> I was, I literally took me like a half hour. But anyways, from there, you'll be able to print out a temporary certificate so you can go out in the field and you can actually do commercial work, which is pretty cool. And eventually you'll get your shiny new certificate in the mail. <laughs> Ding. From when you associate your test to your account in IACRA, it does take about seven days to be able to print that te temporary certificate. The nice thing is you are able to do commercial work once you have that temporary certificate. And they say it takes about six to eight weeks and they actually mail you your UAS operator license. It's a little green card that you can put in your wallet. So other than that, that's pretty much it. As long as you're above 16, uh, you just follow those same steps that we, we took and you're probably more than likely going to have success. And I, I can't stress enough, it's not really a big deal. It's not as uh, mysterious as everyone makes it out to, it's not like the FAA is trying to get you. It's actually pretty straightforward and once you take the test, it makes sense that you should have that knowledge when you're flying professionally or commercially. But also, it opens up a whole new realm of possibility. Like I was talking about earlier, we technically legally would not be able to fly here because we are, even though we make funny YouTube videos, we are commercial operation because we're monetizing our videos. But because we're all 107 certified, we are able to get around that, work with the FAA to open up this airspace and we can operate our commercial uh, foam board airplanes in our backyard, which is pretty cool. So I think that the, um, you know, the important takeaway from this is that you know every industry has its certifications, has its legal processes you have to follow. This just happens to be ours. So if you're out there and you're operating under drones and UAVs commercially, it's important to have your FAA certificate yes. um, and to make sure that you're operating legally and properly. And also a nice thing is, is that if you're 
for instance, a photography studio that's looking to expand their capabilities. Advertising that you are um, properly certified by the FAA, I think is attractive to clients. Yes. And so I think that making sure that you have the proper certifications and that you're operating legally, that's important in any industry, including your own. Yeah, and uh, oftentimes we hear a flight test, like me personally, I have friends or family members who come to me and say, hey, I have this job that we need some drone shots for. And I'll, I'll, I'll price them and I'll say, just look, I, re like, I realize my prices are a little high, but I do want you to know that I am FAA 107 certified. And if you don't decide to go with me, keep that in mind when you go shopping around to other uh, aerial photographers, you wanna make sure they have their FAA 107 certificate, because if they do not, not only will they be liable for anything that happens, but so will you because you're hiring them. So it's just a good, good selling point. If you are a business owner, uh, you definitely wanna be certified. It makes you more legit. Hey guys, I just wanna thank you guys for watching. Um, we named a couple of our favorite resources that we mm -hmm. used that we thought were helpful. If you have some of your own that are maybe free or just a paid one you really think is worth it, please comment with the link below. Any of the resources that we did mention are in the description here. And then actually, you know, check out the comments. I'm sure there's some great recommendations yes. there of things we didn't even know about. Mm -hmm. And make sure you guys subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, we do new videos like this all the time. They're not always as informational as this one. Sometimes we do fun challenges, but it's all based around aviation and things that fly. That's why we're called Flight Test. So hit that subscribe button button, hit that like button, and we'll see you guys next time. See you guys.